Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Creative Collective Podcast. I am flying solo today. Tim is not with me. He is shooting a wedding, the lucky fish, all, although with the temperature outside, that's probably not the best place to be right now. Um, I am joined today by a very, very important person, <laughs> certainly in my life, to be honest, because this man and uh, and the company he's with has absolutely given me my life back, especially in recent months, and I really appreciate everything that they're doing. I'm joined by none other than Justin Benson of Aftershoot. Justin, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> it's it's an honor for me to have you here. Trust me, and and I do not say it lightly when I when I say that you've given me back my life after the after the last few months, looking through Aftershoot or looking through my account. <laughs> the amount of days that I have gained <laughs> just by <laughs> oh, using I your software is ridiculous so <laughs> it's I... it's priceless and uh and just before we even get going that statistic yeah is a actual statistic based on how long it took me to call images before after shoot so wow. you are actually saving that amount of time compared to what it would take me to call yeah yeah I, I've, I've actually always wondered about that i was wondering like what metric you use and it makes sense because a lot of the edits and stuff it, especially now with 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 the edits um, it's it tells me that I've you know saved two or three days on on a particular edit. I'm like two or three days. And when I sit down and think about it, it's actually like yeah, that's two or three days worth of editing that I've just done in a matter of minutes. So <laughs> let's talk about Justin. So uh, as we we're talking off air, I said you know we'll we'll have a little bit of a chat about you. Um, who is Justin? What's Justin about? Where's Justin from? What does Justin do? And uh, let's go from there. Perfect. So uh, yeah, my name is Justin Benson. I am a wedding photographer and the co-founder of Aftershoot. Um, so my photography journey began um, many moons ago. I was working for uh, some TV shows, um, doing like location scouting, finding places for them to film. Uh, and I would, uh, I had to take my camera out and just take pictures of these buildings or locations or whatever it is to try and sell the directors on um, shooting their TV show or their movie there. And, uh, you know, that's really when the photography bug clicked because I got to see some really cool places in New York City and take photos and, you know, of places that some people never got to really go. I mean, I know there in New York City, there's a, this TWA hotel. Mm -hmm. um, I got to go in there before it was a hotel when it was abandoned, just an abandoned <laughs> airplane ter terminal from like the 1950s. And it was awesome. And I have all these cool photos. Um, but yeah, so it really like took the bug there. Uh, and then it ended up actually unfolding into photographing the sets, right? Because they were like, oh, you take really great photos. Why don't you photograph like my uh, my set that I designed for the show and whatever, and then put it in the magazines and whatnot. So uh, it kind of just kept going from there. And then I got the call for a shotgun wedding, right? It was like, gotta go. We're getting married in two weeks. Baby's on the way. Like, we need a photographer. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'll try it. And it was <laughs> like the, you know, if you're passionate about wedding photography, you know, that moment when you just create something that, you know, is so priceless and timeless, uh, that you're just head over heels. So that first wedding, the pictures were absolutely terrible by my standards now, but it clicked that, you know, that bug. And I said, this is what I actually want to do with my life. I want to be able to capture people's, you know, most valued memories and, and wedding photos and really just push the envelope. Uh, so I set forth from there and decided that wedding photography was where I was going to be. I uh, put my nose to the grindstone and and worked my way through, and eventually I left the uh, the TV industry and went as a full time wedding photographer. Good stuff. And what what kind of spurred the the move away from where you were to into weddings? Because you know I, I sometimes feel like weddings are sometimes a stopgap for for a lot of people. You know, they kind of go from weddings into commercial stuff, whereas you almost did the reverse in 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 some ways. What what prompted that? Uh, you know. One of the things I absolutely love about weddings is the challenge. Um, you know, there's so many different scenarios, conditions, you know, instances, and you're always put up against a time crunch. Uh, and you're just, you're dealing with people on their happiest day of their lives. So generally speaking, they're hopefully going to be in a good mood. <laughs> um, you know, you do get the occasional 
people who are a little bit stressed and whatnot, but uh, you know, it's generally good vibes, right? There's always a, always a great atmosphere on wedding days. And if you're, it, you know, if you have the right personality, which is one thing that I, I personally feel I have, um, I'm able to joke. And even in the most stressful situations, I can have fun. And like, I may be thinking in the back of my head, like, wow, this wedding is running two hours late and I need to like make up all this time. But there's a smile and plenty of inappropriate jokes on the surface, keeping everyone yeah. laughing while I'm kind of like building a plan in the back of my head. Um, and that's something that I, I guess I wasn't really getting within like architectural photography. There wasn't as much of a challenge that everything stayed the same. You just had to perfect your craft enough to get it done. Um, whereas weddings, there's always a new challenge, right? You can, you can, I've shot maybe around 500 weddings already. Uh, and I still run into situations where there's just something new, a new challenge, a new thing, or or a new concept that I want to do. Uh, yeah. And that's, again, just something that when you're doing that commercial work, you don't necessarily have as much freedom in that sense, because you have to deliver something for your clients that they're paying for. Whereas with weddings, they're really just like, they hire you for your creativity, right? They see your work, they like your work. And there is boring stuff that you always have to do, but you do get free range, right? You're just there to deliver yeah. good work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And obviously weddings is, you're still doing weddings. Is that correct? You're, you're still in the wedding industry? Okay. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my, my calling card, right? I, I still, I still use after shoot <laughs> every couple weekends here and there. So uh, yeah. And that's one thing that I don't, I don't plan on ever giving up. I'll always still shoot some weddings as long as I go, because for me, you know, the product itself of Aftershoot, I'm responsible for that. And I want to make sure that it's actually functioning the way it should um, and that it's operating the way that we expect it to. So if it doesn't work for me, then we have bigger problems on our plate. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an interesting perspective that because it's it's something that you use and something that you can keep abreast of at all times because you're still doing weddings. You know what to improve, what to do less of or do more of, whatever the case may be. So it's it's a really interesting and beneficial position to be in, I suppose. And that obviously leads me into the next topic of conversation, which is none other than after shoot itself. Tell us a little bit about that journey. What kind of, you know, where did it come from? Where did you kind of see yourself or, you know, where did, where did you enter the, 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 uh, the, the company that is now after shoot, you know, what prompted you into it and, and things like that. Tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah, that's one of my favorite stories. Um, so uh, back in 2019, I saw a Facebook post in like a local New England wedding photography group um, for a person who was looking to speak with photographers about their culling process and how they could potentially help like automate the system. And for me personally, culling was probably the only task I didn't want to do, like editing, I can handle it. I don't love doing it. Right. But calling is just like, it's almost, it almost feels purposeless, right? You save so much time by doing it, but you can't, you're not productive while you're doing it. You're looking at images, selecting images to edit, but you're not actually editing them or doing anything to them. Right. You're just picking images. So I was like, all right, I need to talk to this guy. Um, and so I, you know, messaged him on Instagram and we went back and forth a little bit. Um, and his name's Harsha. And, you know, we were going back and forth. We set up a Zoom call. I gave him all my ideas on culling and what I thought it would be. Um, and so he had actually cold called like 200 different photographers. He was like trying to get as much information as he could. Um, about 50 wanted to get on a call and talk to him. Uh, and so a couple months later, he brought like a proof of concept, right? He had this, this app that was really not at all what it looks like today, just to prove that it could be done. Um, and it was awful, right? So he sent it to all 50 people and, uh, and, and 45 people didn't even respond. Five people responded and said like, give up, you'll never get it done. It's just not possible. And I was like, this is really bad, but here's a list of 500 different things that we can do to actually make it work. And so mm -hmm. from that point forward, we were just attached at the hip, right? We were going through, they, he would send me a new version. I said, hey, could it do this? Could it do that? Uh, and we just kind of kept pushing and pushing and pushing uh, until around um, November 2020, we kind of did like more of an open beta. So we started just giving it to more and more people and letting them try it because we made so many advancements uh, and we felt like, all right, let's get a bigger pool of photographers to test it. Uh, and the response was great. Uh, people were like, yeah, AI culling, this is a thing that can work. It may not be quite there yet, but we see the potential within it. And, and it's just 
blown up ever since. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's just, just watching from, from the outside, it's been an amazing journey, even on a daily basis, you know, when you get a new update coming in or whatever the case may be, you're actually excited to open up the app and be like, yeah, let's see what we can do this time. So like, just to hear that overview of what the journey has been like, is just incredible because it's, you know, it's something that, that if it's not part of your every day, it should be, you know, because you're going to be wasting time. You're going to be spending time doing stuff that you don't need to be spending, spend, spending time on, you know? So it's, it's really, really cool to hear what that, what that journey was like. Obviously you came at it from the perspective of a wedding photographer. Who else is it for, you know, obviously weddings, but, you know, from my own perspective, weddings is what, what it's amazing at, but who else is it for? You know, who, who else could benefit from having after shoot? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty much anybody who takes a lot of photos of anything can find okay. some benefit to it. Um, so we designed it in a way that left it very flexible and open for photographers to really adapt it to their workflow. Um, so obviously wedding photographers, there's a huge need, right? You, you're on a tight deadline, you're taking pictures, you're trying to get them back to your clients and you're always taking a ton of photos. Yeah. But everybody takes a ton of photos now. Mirrorless cameras, you're shooting more than you could ever shoot. Yeah. Right. So we have sports photographers who use it, uh, wildlife photographers. And while a lot of the models are detailed towards people, uh, there's still functionality for inanimate objects, right? So if you're shooting a bird in flight, um, you know, we're able to cluster those similar images together still. So you're not looking at 500 images, at least they're in a, in a batch of similar images. Um, so yeah. And, you know, most important, one thing that I love to kind of dive into, you were just saying how cool it is to see all these like new features and that sort of stuff. This is exactly what we do, right? We listen to every photographer, you know, we designed it originally for me, right? The first version was Justin's culling software, right? But that's when we brought in all these other photographers to see like, what are the things that everyone else needs? So when somebody comes to us and says like, I am a sports photographer and I need it to do it this way. Yeah. We sit down and we look and we see like, what's a new feature or what's a new machine learning algorithm? Like, what are the things that we can do to expand this? and really build it for our users. And as a product, that's one of the coolest things. I mean, right in the app, there's a feature request button. And that actually goes to our email. Like I will read that email, whatever you write in there, I will read yeah. and I will analyze it and see if it's possible. And so, yeah, we're always just kind of growing and expanding. And, and that's really why, you know, we're a subscription-based model. That's why we went for that model because we didn't want it just to be like, hey, here's the software, good luck, have fun with it. Uh, you know, we have the 24 seven support, we have, you know, just full on attention to detail on everything that you guys ask for and trying to implement it in the product. Yeah, like, I must say, kudos to you guys on the support. end. I, uh, I was being an idiot. I think it was, it was either yesterday morning or this morning, I can't remember, but uh, I was just being an idiot. I, I, I didn't, I didn't do something a certain way or whatever it was. And I was like, well, I'm gonna have to try it and try the support you know, and see, and see what happens. And I had an answer within probably about a minute, if that, and it was, uh, yeah. it was Steve. So I always love Steve. Yeah. We, gotta, uh, we have a clear support team. That's, yeah. uh, you know, and that's the thing is that we set out to be different than other companies, right? I've, yeah. I've had experience, like I've emailed different companies for support software, whatever it is, products, you might get a response five days later. Right yeah. there, you're just sitting in their inbox until someone wants to read it. And we're like, we don't want to be that because this is workflow. If yeah. you're stuck, if you have a bug, if something's not functioning, you can't move forward with what you're supposed to do, right? Like if whatever the mistake was that you or a thing that you didn't <laughs> do yesterday, had you had to wait five days for an email, you wouldn't have gotten your, you wouldn't have been able to meet a deadline or you would have, yeah. you know, sat there and you would have got frustrated. And we said like, this is something that needs to change within this industry because we're all on tight deadlines, right? Yeah. So five days is an unacceptable wait time. It needs to be instant. Yeah, exactly. And just, um, you know, like, as you say, deadline, deadlines are everything, especially this time of the year. I've got tons of clients who are emailing me and being like, can we have our, can we have our photos or our videos or whatever the case may be before Christmas? And pre after shoot, I would have been like, no, <laughs> it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't be happening. You know, whereas mm -hmm. now, you know, even, even weddings that I've shot fairly recently are going to be done in the next couple of days and delivered for Christmas, you know, these online galleries. And you can't, you can't put a price on that. You can't put, 
you know, obviously you're saving time and stuff aside. You can't put a price on, on what it does for your business, you know, like to be able to be like, yeah, I can, I can get it out to you before Christmas. My, my contract says differently, but Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll do it for you as a special favor. Here you go. And, and, and there it is. So, um, so yeah, kudos to you guys. It's, it's just, it's an amazing product and, you know, to, yeah, just, just circling back to, to be able to have even, even a user error, like, like I was having and have that support available within a minute, you know, it was just, it, it's mind blowing, especially even with it being a subscription software, you know, you know, there's a lot of other subscription softwares where you can, you can email them or whatever the case may be. And they'll, they'll take days, as you say, you know, five days and that's just too late. It's, it's game over, you know, um, if I had, if I had to do that now, the clients wouldn't be getting their stuff before Christmas. Simple as that. So, um, so yeah, um, saving time aside, <laughs> so actually to focus on more on saving time, let's talk about edits. Yes, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. mine, mine too, actually. <laughs> it's amazing. So yeah, the the journey to edits was was pretty awesome. Um, so obviously we started with culling that was uh the first problem we we kind of saw uh and addressed and and we're still with working with culling and working on culling because you know it's it's a difficult it's more difficult than editing honestly um there's a lot more to take into consideration with culling than there is editing uh but we had gotten culling to a really good position last year um you know we had, we expanded our team quite a bit and we felt like okay we can continue working on culling but let's turn our attention to editing. Um, and the main reason being is that we just saw what the market was doing with AI editing and we didn't agree, right? Mm -hmm. We we launched uh, at the same time as an, our calling at the same time as another AI editing company launched their AI editing. And for me, they didn't make any improvements, right? And if you look at our, like I said, we were launching every two weeks a new feature. Yeah. And this other company didn't do anything for six months. And I was like, that doesn't work for me, right? Like I need our, our company and its core value is listening to the users. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I was like, I was very vocal early on to this other company. I was like, I wish we could do, I wish you would do this. I wish you would do this. Like hoping that maybe we could partner and, and work together and, and whatever it may be, but they just didn't care if you wanted to give them feedback, it didn't matter. And I was just like, that's not, that's not the value that I would instill. That's not something I want to, you know, represent or, or advertise about or, or connect with. Uh, so that kind of set me in motion. And I said, all right, it's, we got to get editing, like moving now it's time to go. Like there are so many things that we could do to editing, to make it better for our users that other companies just aren't paying attention to. Yeah. So we dove into it. Uh, we started the process in March of 2022 um, it was rough going at first. Uh, I don't think I edited actually, like, I don't think I delivered any of my personal weddings for like four months because I was just running the same wedding through like, all right, I got a slight improvement on this one. I'm gonna leave it here. And then let's try this other model and then retweak this and then try it again and see what it does. Uh, so there was a, it was a rough, <laughs> sorry to my clients, but it was a rough <laughs> couple months trying to get it to actually operate and function the way it would. Um, but, uh, just a shout out to our team. They were, they were devoted. We have like a, you know, a 40 person team. They were devoted, devoted to this, uh, and tried everything to just make it as awesome as they could, uh, while listening to feedback and, and still looking forward, right. There was more to it than just like, Hey, let's just get it here. Yeah. We've already started the next, you know, dozen tasks that are coming up on, on things that we need to do that we want to incorporate that we want, like, again, partially user feedback. A lot of the complaints that I had from the other companies where I was like, it just doesn't do this. And I wish it did. Um, so yeah, they, they, they worked hard at it and, uh, and then we built it. Right. So once they had all the magical unicorns, we call them, that's our AI. <laughs> so then once the magical unicorns were in place and they could do exposure and white balance and all those things, then it was actually building it so that you could use it as a, as a user. So. All right. Well, I was actually planning on having one of those uh, blow up unicorns in, in the office today, but uh, <laughs> with it being winter over here, I, I couldn't find them anywhere, strangely enough. <laughs> no one's got any uh, <laughs> blow up pool toys <laughs> in yeah, any of the shops. Yeah. Um, all right. Awesome. So, um, yeah. So, 
you, you, you briefly touched on, on on having plans in the pipeline over there. What what does the future hold for for Aftershoot as a brand? You know, what does it hold for edits? What does it hold for culling? You know, what what do you think is coming up? What do you want to come up? Um, and what what can what are you allowed to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> that way. That is a that is a fantastic question. I'm probably not allowed to tell you anything, but I will. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think you know the most pressing things at hand. We actually have a, a big redesign coming, um, and we have you know some workflow things that we want to kind of work out with going from culling to editing, um, so that we can make the process a little bit smoother and easier. Um, and then we just have a lot of like small feature things that people are looking for, you know, as far as like being able to edit, you know, with multiple profiles on the same set of image or the same, you know, like a one wedding with two different profiles and, you know, just different things like that, being able to like globally adjust things. So you can say like, Hey, I wish that uh, everything was just a half a stop brighter. I it's just always underexposing a little bit and you could tell the AI like, Hey, I just want everything to be a little bit brighter. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of really cool things in the pipeline for that. Uh, as far as the future of what we want to do, uh, really, it's just honing in on on what pain points our users have, right? So every time somebody comes to us and says, like, this is a pain point, we want to try and eliminate that. And it could be anything, right? The, the door's wide open. Um, you know, we've had a lot of requests for different, you know, different features to put into culling or, or editing, but we've also just had, like, requests for, you know, being able to just put an app in this space, uh, you know, the so iPad app, that's something that we've, we've discussed a lot about and the possibility of, you know, being able to do it, um, some, someday, right. It's not, not on the near horizon. <laughs> I know everyone gets really excited, like, oh, iPad, I want to bring it everywhere and cull and edit and do, but you know, there's, there's obviously restrictions to it, but, yeah. uh, you know, there's just those things when someone comes to us and says, Hey, I just need this to, to work better. That's what we want to do. Uh, we want to solve problems. So, uh, anything we can do, the and really the future is dictated by by our photographers. Everyone who uses us and comes to us and says this is this is what I want you guys to do next. We look at the feasibility and try and figure out how to accomplish it. Yeah, and like my just just to kind of come back to to what you were saying there. Like I'm when we when we speak about aftershoot, I'm I'm talking about aftershoot as something that I know and love and and use. Obviously, I started off with culling, um, and then recently got got into edits and you know like just just to highlight that fact you know it, it's an amazing product and the one thing that i do like about um you know user suggestions or, or issues or anything like that is even on the facebook group you guys are constantly taking or fielding comments saying you know we could we could do with more of this or can we try that and you don't get that with anyone else you know i i've got friends who who, who use the other software it'll it'll remain lame, nameless but um you know they're they're just not happy it's it it feels archaic in term you know in comparison to aftershoot be it be it for culling or or for editing um you know i i looked into it for a little while and i was i was just scared away i was like i don't want any of that and, you know and and after she came along and because of my experience with it i was a bit skeptical and you know here i am i i i couldn't function without aftershoot not to be honest so you know, if 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 anyone out there is contemplating it or or feels like they could benefit from having AI culling, having AI editing, get involved. <laughs> you know, um, and that's kind of what we wanted to, uh, what I wanted to, you know, get into is you guys have actually put together a a, a referral code for us or a or an affiliate code for for the Creative Collective, and um, tell tell us a little bit more about that and and how how someone can get involved and, and what they can get and uh and we'll we'll finish we'll finish it up shortly absolutely so uh so the code is a 15 percent discount code um so after shoot is 120 dollars a year um and so you can get 15 percent off using the creative collective uh, as your code um so that's the creative collective <laughs> and you, you'll be able to get on that year subscription right now edits is 100 percent free um, so everyone who's been able to get into the beta so far, and we're going to open up that beta to a lot more people over the next, you know, week and or two. Um, so it's going to be hundred percent free at the start, because again, we value your opinion. 
we yeah. want to hear everybody say, hey, this is like ready to go and and everything works as it should um, before we push ahead. And and just like you said, it's we're really proud of what we do and how we field answers and questions. And, you know, if AI culling is not there for you yet, it turns into what do we need to do to be there for you and help us get there, right? So if it's not, if the culling's not culling the way you want it to, let us know uh, because we've already, like whenever we get those requests, the team immediately dives on it. If you say, hey, it's just picking the wrong emotion every time, send us a hundred different cases where it happens, right? Show us where we're, where we're not doing it right. And we literally built new models to fix that right away. So then the next release, fixes your problem. So it's just, you know, it's, we don't know unless you tell us uh, what it is. Like for me, it's 98.7% accurate, right? The last wedding I delivered, 98.7% of the images I delivered were the ones that Aftershoot chose, right? And then for the edits, the edits, it was no more than 20 minutes of tweaking, just kind of making some adjustments. And I had to like clone out some stuff and, you know, general things that it wouldn't cover, just baseline adjustments it did, but it was so close and, and almost ready to go straight out of edits, right? Yeah. But that's the thing. If you don't have that experience, if it's not culling or editing the way you want it to, we can fix it. We just need to know that we need to fix it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, just coming back to to edits there, like I, as I said, I was skeptical. Even even with edits, I was probably a little bit skeptical going into it because, you know, it, it's something that I obviously had a little bit of experience with with AI software based on, on culling. But getting into edits, I was like, there's no way I can get it right. There's no way I can get it anything like what I like what I edit. And I edited a wedding this morning. And there was maybe, I'm not gonna lie, there was maybe five to ten images, if that, that were not edited the way that I would edit them. The rest, you know, fourteen, fifteen hundred, I think was the total amount. Absolutely spot on. Color, everything, you know, cropping, the whole lot was was just absolutely perfect so kudos that's to you guys so awesome. that's so awesome to hear and that's the thing it's like it's just it's it's really it's crazy how it actually functions right when you yeah. when you think about what it is and when i you know just a quick story before we go hmm. when i was initially teaching the guys like how editing works I was trying to there. I was like, okay, so you edit differently in different scenarios, right? That's how it all you're like, oh, here's a backlight scenario. Here's a flash. Here's off camera flash. Here's bouncing. Here's full sun. And I'm trying to go through and teach them these things. So I'm like, all right, here's how I would edit this image. I would pull the highlights down. I'd bring my shadows up. My contrast goes about here. My blacks come down here. My exposure like this. And then I was like, okay, great. That's how I would edit that style of image. So let's go to like something completely different now. And I'd just be like, okay, great. So I'm going to pull the highlights down and the shadows. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, this is, I edit the same, just different tolerances essentially, right? You do really, when you have a style, you're not adjusting totally like out of the left field sliders. So it really just has to learn how to go from like what the image was to what you would do in that situation, you know, based on your past edits. So, you know, like I said, it was a lot easier to get to that end result with culling because it is a pattern uh, to some degree um, yeah. based on that. So. Well, well, let's start to finish it up there. Um, I've loved chatting to you about aftershoots. We could, I could literally go on for days about it. I, I will speak to anyone about aftershoots if they're willing to listen and more and more people are. So, Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys will be getting a lot of signups coming in. Um, where can people find you? Uh, so in terms uh, of obviously your own photography business and of course Aftershoot, where it was best to get get in touch with with you as a person and you as Aftershoot. Yeah, absolutely. So I am uh, Jay Benson Photography on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and then Aftershoot is Aftershoot Co. on Instagram. Um, and we have something called the Aftershoot Community on Facebook. Uh, so if you just search it up, you can come in there and post comments, questions, feedback, critiques, whatever you got. Uh, I'm the guy who admits all the posts. So if uh, I, I kind of, we have a little, you know, we'll let you kind of come in, but there's a lot of people who come in for support and I'm like, it's 24 hours in the app. <laughs> go there, go there. Uh, but yeah, so we're we're always happy to to meet you guys and and talk to you and chat with you. Um, so thank you so much for, for having me. And I, I hope to see you all on Instagram and in the Facebook community. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll leave links to everything in the, uh, in the show notes. If you're, if you're listening to it, 
and in the uh, description on YouTube if you're watching it. So you'll be you'll have quick a quick um, way to get into all those things. All right. Well, thank you very much, Justin. I really it's been, it's been amazing having a chat with you. Uh, I've loved every second of it. It's been great to to hear more about Aftershoot and a little bit more about the story. And uh, I really hope that uh, you know anyone out there looking for some kind of uh, answer to their praise <laughs> that uh, that they'll realize that this is it. And uh, yeah, thank thank you very much for for joining us. And uh, I'll, I'll see you. I'll probably see you in the group. I hope not for any support requests, so. just for a chat <laughs> and maybe some recommendations or whatever else. But uh, I look I look forward to seeing seeing you in the group. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Good stuff. Take care, Justin. Thank you.